The advocacy against the rape culture has once again gained support as Nollywood actress Foluke Daramole Salako calls for very stiff penalty against offenders. Plus TV spoke to her on this issue. When thespian and rape activist Foluke Daramola Salako was on Plus TV Africa's entertainment show Tea Time to add a voice against rape. The actress, who is a rape survivor, runs an NGO, Passion Against Rape and Abuse in Africa. She revealed that most of the cases on the table in recent times involve religious leaders' complicity in the menace. I mentioned that even before I heard the part of Uwa's story, that it has some belt of churchism in it. Now, Africans, Nigerians, take a whole lot of things for granted. And we push our responsibilities too much to God. A parent would say, go to church. The things that you're supposed to teach your child at home, you tell her to go to church to learn it. You tell your child to go to her pastor to tell her that she has started menstruating. Mm. Mm. You tell your daughter to go and meet the pastor to pray for her when she's looking for a life partner. Why are you making, why are you creating vulnerability Beating. for both parties? The actress come activist, however, disagrees with comments that Nollywood is one of the major contributors to the rape culture in Nigeria. Mm -mm. It's a 50-50 thing. Garbage in, garbage out. You cannot give what you don't have. It's so you cannot separate Nollywood from the system itself? You can't! You cannot expect Nollywood to be giving you Hollywood standard movies. How? Where? It is what is in the society first. Now, what I think, in my own perspective, is for us to channel these this platforms to understand that you have to neg make sure you negate this abuse and rape for, with anything you do. Mm. She advocates castration as a punishment for rape. Definitely. Mm. Castration, oh, castration straight. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> castration straight. As voices against the vice increase, one can only hope that the crime will truly be treated with disdain and victims will no longer be victimized. Ifeolua Oshunkeya for PLOS TV Africa. Joining us now to talk more on this is Funke Treasure, Executive Team Lead, Illuminate Nigeria Development Network. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Why must we not be tired of having conversations around the issue of rape? Well, this is a societal development. We could see that... Um, there's a spike in, in, in the cases of rape we have across Nigeria at the moment. So it is not a conversation that will take the back burner uh, soon. It, it is very much uh, the kind of conversation we should have at breakfast time, at lunch time, and after hours. It's, it's there. I mean, it's, it's against um, the fundamental human rights of whoever is, is the victim, whether man or woman. So it's a conversation that is, uh, that is important and significant at this time. Well, in spite of the increased advocacy, we have protests on all platforms, on social media, out of it. You know, people, we just uh, shared one uh, with uh, Ifi Aronu um, in Anambra State. We still continue to have a spike Parents, uh, fathers raping their daughters, um, uncles raping their nieces and all of that. What can we do differently um, to push this conversation in such a way that it is a bit more impactful than it is now? Well, I've always been an advocate of the human angle approach to whatever issue is being discussed or is being mainstreamed. And we tend to make uh, we tend to make a mistake of thinking that everyone is on is on the internet or is on social media. The bulk of uh, the cases we've had in recent times have been with everyday people. Uh, a hawker uh, 
you know, applying her goods and someone raping her. They're, they're community-based. They're within the community. So we must go to where the people are. We must change the, the strategy. We must begin to speak in the language of the people. We must use traditional media. We must begin to engage, have a stakeholders conference. It's not enough to do protests. Protests, uh, protests are good, but we must step, take a step uh, you know, forward and begin to engage at the community level in the languages, begin to engage the fathers, begin to have, look, this is, this is cost intensive, but it will be cost intensive at the end of the day. Because we need to engage. We need to, yeah, we've done quite a lot on social media. That's where the middle class, the upper middle class, the lower middle class are. But we need to reach the everyday people and we need to mount up the campaign at the workplace as well. Because these are also happening. Rape cases are happening at the workplaces. Um, but, uh, you know? I, I want to... Okay, sorry to interrupt, but I, I want to take your uh, perspective on, um, you know, pushing this conversation a little more. Some are saying that the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs doesn't seem to be in the front line on this, that it is NGOs and other non-governmental organizations that are actually being more vocal. Would you agree with this? And who should be, um, if you do, who should be, you know, championing this uh, as per se? Well, you, I made an advocacy two weeks back and I said the same thing in the line of what you've said now. Um, our governments at the state, local and federal level must begin to see this as a matter of urgent, uh, that needs urgent attention. Uh, when, when governments get involved, just as we've seen the legislators getting involved now, then people will begin to pay even more attention. Governments cannot afford to play the ostrich especially as we've seen cases, you know, spreading across, you know, the regions. It's not just in the eastern part of Nigeria. It's happening in the northern part. There's another case that's come up um, in Ibadan over the weekend. And look at the, the case in the Punch News, as reported in the Punch News paper. Incestuous, a father and the, and, and, and the daughter. It shows that we now begin the government of urgent national attention and then so must lend their voices and then lend their ministries to begin to address this. I, I noted this earlier, two weeks back, that I haven't seen any concerted effort from the Ministry of Women Affairs regarding these this incidences. And I'd also said the same thing about the governor of Edo State. He hasn't said anything about the case of Ua. Instead, we've seen fake news springing up you know around the case of Uwa saying that she 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 was pregnant for a pastor and that 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 but you see it's because we're not seeing concerted effort from the state and from the ministry uh, of women affairs in that state and at the federal level saying look we're interested in this when they mm. lend their weight and credibility of, of, of these different cases all right Thank you very much. Uh, that's the much no, we can take at this time. My apologies. I think the network went off a bit. Thank you very much Thank for you. your comments.